This is the fifth session in our series about conducted emissions testing. In the previous session, we made some initial measurements on one of our products. In this session, we'll look at the saving and reopening of results and the interpretation of signal types. So here is our analyzer screen again. I'm just going to recall the measurements we took yesterday so that we can analyze the information in more detail. If we go to File and Open Previously Scanned Results, we have obviously a list of results that we took previously. I'm going to load this one, open it. Now, notice that there are two areas here. One is labeled Current, and the other one is labeled Store. When we save information, we do say the current trace, which is the one that was current at the time we saved it, and any stored trace that we had. In this case, we have both current and store because it's showing us a finite number of results against both. Uh, I can import the current again as the current and the store again as the store. I can elect to import the screen settings, which is what I will do because I don't think the screen settings we have at the moment are the correct ones. So I'll import what we had before and accept it and we'll have the results plotted on the screen. Just confirms the input device which is correct and here's the results we saw yesterday. Uh, the orange trace was taken with the lamp running and the black trace was taken with the lamp switched off. So with the lamp switched off we have this series of narrowband peaks which we established were harmonic series. When we switch the lamp on we overlay this broadband spectrum on the peaks. The peaks are still there. Here is our broadband spectrum. Now this broadband characteristic and indeed the narrowband characteristic gives us information about the nature of the signal that the lamp is conducted back down our mains lead. In order to understand what these signals represent we need to refer to our good friend Fourier to analyze the spectra. First of all, we can have a narrowband signal which is characterized by narrow peaks and this equates to a continuous signal, uh, either sine wave or square wave, whatever, but it's continuous. Broadband spectra, on the other hand, relate to discontinuous or impulsive signals if you look at it on an oscilloscope. Narrowband signal is characterized by peak amplitude of the signal uh, of the same order as the RMS level, whereas the impulsive signal has a very high peak level rel relative to the RMS level. With narrowband signals, generally speaking, we have a fundamental which equates to the basic frequency of the signal and possibly many harmonics. So now we can start to understand the nature of the signal that's coming from our luminaire. These narrowband emissions clearly relate to a continuous signal uh, being generated by the lamp, fundamental at about 250 kilohertz. Lots of harmonics, so it's more like a square wave rather than a sine wave. When we switch the lamp on, we get this broadband emission spectrum, which clearly relates to an impulsive signal. And we can show that by looking at the signal coming out of the lizard. The lamp is currently switched off. Uh, switching the lamp on, we can see the impulsive peaks every 10 milliseconds. If we zoom in on the time base, we can look at an individual peak, and we can see that the whole event occurs in less than 100 microseconds. So it's really quite fast. So returning to our analyzer, we can check to see whether the theory actually works in practice. Now here, with the lamp running, we have this broadband characteristic. So if the theory is right, we should see major differences between the three detectors in this area. Whereas on these narrowband peaks, we should see similar results regardless of which detector we use. So what we can do is select all detectors and do a sweep. 
So here we have the three results, peak, quasi-peak, and average. And we can see straight away that in the broadband area, we do indeed get big differences between the three detectors, whereas on the narrowband peaks, maybe we'll get similar results. Well, I'll just stop that for the moment. We have enough information here to work on. And I'll zoom in in this area so we can see these areas in more detail. So to zoom, I'll select Linear Scan. And right-click on the screen, select Zoom, and pull the right-hand side down to towards the low frequency end. And straight away we can see, uh, again, broadband area, major differences between the three detectors. Narrowband area, we get similar results. So on these peaks, we, we are within about 5 dBs of each other for the three detectors. Uh, also note how the average and quasi-peak detectors are able to pick out a continuous signal from amongst this broadband noise. Well, this result looks interesting, so we'll save this. So I'll go to File, and notice that we have two options for saving. I can, I can save the information under the System mode, which gives us a complete copy of all the full set of results, and allows us to re-import the information at a later date. that. The other options, we can export the data as a CSV file, which means we cannot re-import it into this software, but we can export it to, say, Excel or similar. And there are two ways we can do that. Either all data, which may include thousands of results. It's a, uh, a data point for every sample we take in the frequency range. Or display data, which is just the value of each pixel on the screen. This is a much more reduced data set, gives us a reduced file, but the information we see on the screen would be faithfully reproduced. So if we do that, um, we'll give it a name, save that. So though that information is now all on screen. There is an alternative, which is to save the screen using the Alt Print Screen function on the keyboard. And I can now export that image directly into our test report, for example, using Word. So here is our Word document. I'll just Control V, paste the image in, and I can add notes as required. And in this way, create my test report. Well, that I'm brings us test. to the end of this session. In the next session, we'll talk about detectors, frequency steps, and dwell times.